Okay, we go to the uh, translational mechanical system at first, uh, uh, whereby uh, this system um, is focused on the force vector uh, that relates to the displacements or the velocity of the systems. Okay, so this system uh, consists of three um, components, which is spring, uh, mass, and damper, as you can see here. Okay, so. Uh, uh, for the case of the uh, modeling, uh, so you need to know uh, the relation in mathematical um, uh, form uh, for each uh, components uh, of the translational systems. Uh, so then um, uh, we can have here in the two uh, f form of uh, mathematical relation, which is a force velocity form and force displacement form. But generally, um, um, in uh, de determine the, 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 the final transfer functions, uh, uh, the system uh, uh, we are uh, intends to create the uh, force uh, displacement form instead of force velocities. Okay, so as you can see there, um, they have different between force velocity form and force displacement form because the force velocity form is is. Uh, is a first order which is the highest order than the force displacement form. So then, um, because because it's, it relates to the velocities and uh, for the force displacement, it relates to the the, the displacements with uh, in zero order situations. Uh, if compared to the velocity in the first order situations, okay. So. Um, when we uh, do uh, the derivations, of course, we need to, to, to go to the frequency domain, which is the S domain's uh, form, uh, which is to, to uh, do the Laplace transform to the system. And here the table uh, can summarize the Laplace transform for each element of the time domain that we, we uh, on the previous tables, uh, which is uh, to make it easy for the, uh, the, the derivation process. Okay, uh, uh, for the first uh, uh, for the first uh, uh, approach and, and that we can discuss here for the translation system, we can discuss about the uh, uh, the FBD approach in uh, deriving the uh, uh, transfer function uh, of the mechanical uh, systems. Okay, we go to the, the the very simple mechanical system with a single rigid body that. Uh, attach uh, uh, to the, uh, the the wall uh, with the spring uh, case uh, uh, with the spring uh, with a k uh, value and the damper with the fv value and these uh, uh, object of of the rigid body are are intense or applied with the force uh, on the on the left side makes the displacement move on the left side so here how we're going to um, uh, find the gs uh, using the fbd approach okay the first thing you need to know is the uh, what is the uh, input uh, to the system that makes the the system move and the outputs that indicates its movement okay for this case uh, as you can see here obviously the force applied as an input that makes the the, the object with ms a move uh, uh, move uh, with the xt value okay so here uh, by using fbd the first thing we need to know uh, or identify uh, what is the force uh, applied uh, the forces applied on the uh, each uh, sides of the, the the object okay as you uh, with reference to the uh, figures the force applied, of course, on the left sides, pulls, and the spring and dampers are the opposite sides, uh, pulls. Okay, and another one you need to consider is the force due to the mass, which is the same flow as the force on, uh, according to the damper and spring, makes uh, this force, this opposite force to the force applied is a impedance force. Okay. So, uh, according to the third law of the motions, uh, on the Newton's third law, okay, we can make the relation uh, for this case is a total force impedance here is equals to the force applied. So, 
it makes that when the total force here is minus with the force applied is zero so the object is not moved or the force applied is bigger than the force impedance makes the uh, the, uh, uh, the mass object uh, move to the left and vice versa okay so we just indicate the force applied as a f so uh, when we make the equation we need to know the input output relation of the system uh, for this case the input is a force and the output is a displacement so the e equation that we intend to, to, to create here is using the force displacement uh, relation form okay so we put from the table that we have learned before we put um, uh, uh, the, the, the force, uh, force displacement relation for the spring, uh, damper, and mass here and equals to the force Ft is a force applied. So then we can change, um, we can change to the Laplace form and uh, we can get the S domain form of the system. Okay, because uh, here we know that the the input of the system is the force applied and the output is a displacement so we can arrange uh, uh, by using the transfer function equation that we have learned before so that the, 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 the output is uh, above the input uh, of the system makes the this final equation for this single uh, object uh, single object uh, to the wall uh, connected to the wall equations uh, final equation of the uh, or we can say that the transfer function of the mechanical system for these uh, systems okay so let's say we go to the uh, two rigid body uh, we, or we can say here is a two degree of freedom of translational mechanical system which is consists of m1 and F, m2 here that tied with the damper of fb3 and k2 for the spring and then also tied also connected with the wall with the spring for with k1 for the m1 and k3 for the m2 so um, uh, by default as you can see here the force applied are intense on the left side makes the the movement of the mass one is on the left side and mass two on the left side as well so for the mass one the, the displacement are indicates with the x1 and uh, for the mass two uh, the displacement uh, is the indicates by the uh, x2 okay and the force uh, sorry the damper uh, coefficient for the m1 is indicated by the fb1 and M, m2 indicates by the fb2 okay so this is the uh, coefficient uh, damper that uh, separately uh, up uh, apply on the each uh, uh, mass uh, of the object respect uh, respectively okay so here how we're going to find the the, the, the transfer function that required here uh, which is uh, the, the the output is the x2 and the input is the fs or the force applied ft here okay the first step by using the fbd we need to consider the first mass the mass one uh, so the mass one uh, uh, you need to uh, the, uh, come out with the the, 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 the the forces that only due to the motion of the m1 itself so because this m1 is connected with the other mass m2 and not only connected to the wall so first of all we need to we need to determine uh, the, 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 the the forces uh, that react uh, or apply on the mass one according to the uh, connection with the wall so here this is the force that we can draw okay so the next one we need to um, uh, the, 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 the force uh, the forces that, 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 that apply or re react due to only to the motion of the m1 which is uh, uh, the force uh, between the m1 and m2 okay so the next one is we combine all these forces uh, in one object so we can get all this equation 
before we start to relate each other by using the uh, third law of Newton, uh, third law of the Newtons. Okay. So uh, the sec. Uh, so for the the equation, and of course uh, we have two things only: the the inputs as a force and the output as a displacement so we intend to create the force displacement uh, uh, form of equations so here we can uh, i can directly write the relation according to the uh, final uh, fbd that we have made so this is the relation between the uh, for the case of the mass one uh, equation of motions and lastly we can uh, separate between the x1s uh, and x2x and fx uh, equation as a final equation for the uh, uh, equation of motion for the m uh, mass one okay we go to the mass two okay mass two the same thing we do is uh, 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 need to find the force uh, of motion uh, react on the mass between mass two and the wall uh, connected and between mass 2 and m1 and we combine all the forces in one object as you can see here okay so so then we can go ahead to the uh, relation uh, of motion using the third law of newtons and then we rearrange to make a simple uh, before we combine with the uh, mass 1 uh, equations as a final works okay so the final step uh, by uh, combining or using the relation between a uh, relation uh, operation between the mass one uh, equation of motion and mass two equation of motion so we can get the uh, final equation uh, uh, as equation three as you can see there and then by subsequence the equation 3 to equation 1 so we can get the the, the required uh, uh, transfer function that we want which is a relation between uh, x2 and force apply fs uh, as this one okay this is the final part maybe uh, we need some uh, a little bit uh, a long uh, calculation there between equation 1 and equation 2 and next on equation 3 and equation 1 to get the final equation as we can see here so so that is the uh, uh, that is the uh, uh, approach uh, that we use uh, using uh, fbd uh, for the translational systems okay uh, so then for the fbd we can uh, we can summarize that the first step we need to know is to identify the forces uh, react on the rigid body itself in both uh, situations which is force on the impedance size and force uh, acting or apply on the mass and then we start uh, we, we start to draw the, the, the force uh, that react on the first on the on the single rigid body uh, one by one if you have a, a several um, rigid body with the mass so you need to 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 go uh, one by one between the reaction uh, uh, for the mass itself and reaction the mass with another mass or another systems okay so we start uh, after we identify the the, the, the the vector of the force uh, that that apply or react on the each uh, body uh, uh, with the m mass so then we can uh, uh, we can slowly go to the mathematic mathematical form where whereby we need to know what is the input and what is the output so then we get we, we, we because by, by the end we we want to get the relation between the input and output of the system to to create the transfer function of the system so here um, we need to go to the Newton's third law which is a uh, relation with which the force opposites uh, is uh, can 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 be done okay so from that equation we can rearrange then to to, to final uh, draw the 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 the, 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 the 
transfer function of the system itself. So this this whole flow uh, is the, the the overall flow of the uh, uh, the FBD method approach. So the next uh, uh, method, as, uh, as as I mentioned before, we have another method which is called the uh, motion by in inspection method. I can see here is the EMI, whereby we rearrange the impedance connected to the motion uh, to the motion uh, of each uh, uh, situations. Okay, the first part is uh, you need to know uh, the actually the. Uh, relation uh, between the fs dx uh, and x x x or the displacement force and displacement is actually uh, the 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 impedance form of the systems as we can see here um the force applies is actually is equal to the impedance uh, motion of the systems uh, according to the according to the third newton's law okay so uh, we need to use this uh, relation to identify uh, or to derive the transfer functions. Uh, it's actually similar to the mesh network in electrical systems. Okay, so let's say we go to the, the third, uh, the, we have a more complex uh, three degree of freedom of the systems, which is, is difficult to, maybe difficult to use the FBD. So let's say here we have M1, M3 and M2. So we can list out here, we have a displacement of x1, x2, and x3. Mass, we have m1, m2, and m3. And for the spring, we have k1 and k2. Viscosity, we have four viscosity here. So uh, for the mass itself, and also the connection, also uh, uh, between the mass. And the force applied only Ft on the left side as we can see here okay so uh, the first thing by using the EMI you need to know um, uh, for the M1 as uh, at first so relation on the M1 you need to know the sum of the connected to the X1 which is uh, a multiply with the X1 and for the sum between the X2 and S1 and X2 which is multiplied to the X2 and sum of impedance between the X1 and X3 which is multiplied with the x3 and equal to the sum applied force at x1 because this one is for the mass one okay so here uh, we need to go to the m2 relations so the m2 relation is a uh, of course is a uh, uh, is a, the, the sum of the between the x1 and x, x2 will be the uh, opposite with the x1 so they, they become they, they are written with the negative here and the sum of impedance connected to the motion of at, at x2 that multiply with the x2 is a positive here and the positive and negative here is because uh, uh, the, the relation between these two are opposites okay for the sum of the impedance between x1 and x2 is the opposite uh, to the uh, sum of impedance motion at x2 so it needs to minus with the, with the x3 and that one is the sum of applied force at x2 okay because this one is according to the m2 okay so next is the m3 so the same thing uh, we will return for the x3 which is uh, m3 sorry which is according to the x3 okay all right so so as we can see here for the first uh, m1 is according to the x1 so then uh, the the final uh, equation that we can return here as we can see so after uh, looking on the relations we can write as as here uh, the impedance for the x1 here uh, motion at x1 will be like this one and uh, sum of the impedance between x1 and x2 is only the k2 okay and for the sum of impedance between x1 and x3 is only the f3 uh, minus with the uh, is only the fb3 which is the damper of the of the 
of the uh, uh, mastery okay and the sum of applied force at the x1 is zero because they they don't have the applied force there because the only applied force it happen in the m2 okay so the same thing here for the m2 so as you can see here the force applied at x2 is fs yes this is the force applied here at m2 and for the uh, uh, mass 3 here the force applied also zero okay so max makes that uh, uh, this equation is equal to zero okay so most of the uh, sum of impedance uh, for the x1 and x3 is according to the fv3 and f uh, for the x2 and x3 is according to fv4 so they take this one and this one for the sum of impedance for the case of these two uh, relations and for the case of the uh, connected to the motion of x3 okay it means that uh, there, there are summation of the uh, viscous temper for the uh, between the m1 and m3 and m2 and m3 okay all right um, so we have these three final equation for each mass so we do uh, some uh, parallel equation and equality operations so finally after long calculation we can get the the the, the required transfer function between x1 and fs as 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 follows okay so this one you need to find out by yourself because it's a very basic uh, mathematical operation or and relation that we can we can do and uh, the lastly why we get this one because uh, we assume that uh, all the values uh, for the mass, uh, stiffness, K, and uh, viscous damper, Fv, is equal to 1. Okay? So, we, the, the final equation is going to be like this. Alright. So, it's easy for you to put uh, early uh, uh, this value of 1 inside the, uh, the, these three equations before you making the operation uh, uh, of relations, okay.